So what exactly do these Chinese proposals entail? They build on special drawing rights, a reserve asset based on a basket of national currencies. Special drawing rights, or SDRs, were created in 1969 by the International Monetary Fund as an international reserve asset, but they haven't been used a lot since then. China's central banker wants to change that. What Governor Joe is suggesting is that the SDR would slowly over time begin to replace national currencies. They would not just be vouchers exchangeable for national currencies, they would become uh, international money uh, themselves. Every five years, the IMF board review the formula of currencies that make up the SDR. Currently, it's the world's top four. It's a weighted average of four countries, the dollar, euro, yen, and, and pound. <coughs> sure, Mr. The dollar, 44% weight, and the euro, 34% weight, and 11% each for the pound and the, uh, and the yen. And only weeks after Governor Joe's proposal, SDRs were back in the spotlight at the G20 London summit. World leaders announced that the IMF would create an extra $250 billion worth of SDRs to pump into the global economy. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. It was a one-off allocation born out of crisis. But the choice of SDRs for a global stimulus package could give a clue as to who might shape and control a reformed world reserve system. Is the SDR, as one commentator put it, a world currency in waiting, and one that would be outside the control of any sovereign body? One organisation felt that they were winners. The IMF is back. Today you get the proof. When you read the communique, each paragraph, or almost each paragraph, let's say the important one, as in one way or another related to IMF work. The IMF as the de facto world central bank would be controversial. For a start, it gives a lot of power to the US, which is the only country on its board with veto powers. But under Governor Joe's plan, the Chinese currency and others would become part of the basket of currencies that make up the special drawing rights. Moreover, SDRs would be used in international trade, like a reserve currency. Mandel, a frequent visitor to China, is fully on board. I propose that the um, Chinese yuan be put into the SDR, and they have a weight in it of uh, at least equal to the Japanese yen. And we'll see, uh, we'll see if that comes about. I think it will come about because uh, China's arrived at a position where its currency is one of the four or five most important in the world. But is China motivated by economics alone? Many in the US think not. Gary Schmidt has studied China's rise. Part of the Chinese effort to sort of um, move away from the dollar, let's say, um, is both economic, but it's also political. Um, again, I think the Chinese would like to sort of see their ability to, um, to have the capacity to, to move away from the dollar because moving away from the dollar means that the U.S. leadership is less viable. Robert Mandel's vision of a global reserve currency is not that different to China's. But for him, it is purely about economics. Putting messy politics and national ambitions aside, global trade and growth, he believes, would all benefit from a single reserve currency. The obstacles are surmountable. All it would take if Obama believed it, and he said, do it, he would be done. And they would, do, they would get in line, they'd learn what they need to do, and very quickly everything would fall into place. <clears throat> in the Europe, it's a little more difficult because you have have uh, 16 presidents in the Eurozone. Taking Mandel's vision of a single reserve currency to its logical conclusion would mean free trade without the trouble of exchange rates and financial integration from Beijing to Washington and down to Johannesburg. There would be no more point to speculators betting on national currencies. 
and the world's monetary policy would lie not in the hands of the individual nations, but in the hands of a collective global central bank, a European central bank writ large. Historically, both China and the United States have been very, very reluctant to agree to anything like that. Among other things, coordinated monetary policy would also mean coordinated policy on all of the issues involving trade, which are ultimately international issues. Almost certainly the United States and China will say no. The United States is not going to give up a dollar, period. <laughs> My feeling is that it's better to have some measure of competition among international currencies, for example, between the dollar and the euro in order to keep central banks honest. But even if Robert Mundell's vision is too ambitious for most, there is a growing belief that the dominance of the US dollar is not good for America or for the world. This system has to change. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And it's clear that the US is reluctant to even have the issue discussed. China, Russia, the other countries will have to push it. And they have to make it clear that it is not the U.S. who will decide who, what will be the global reserve system. If we don't cannot deal with this this year or at the most uh, next year, you know, people will forget about it. And people will have to wait until next giant bubble, which will be much bigger than this one. Uh, so that's why I think there's an urgency to do it. Yeah. And by doing it right, then we can think about how to deal with issues like climate change, like uh, uh, you know, uh, international security. I think the ultimate logic of very open capital markets that we clearly have, the global finance system and global trade as well, uh, the logical conclusion of that should be a global currency that provides stability and and a clear uh, means for making payments without uh, the disturbance of exchange rate changes. We're a long ways from uh, reaching that, but the question is whether uh, you make some advance in that direction. Notwithstanding the political resistance, economic concerns and practical challenges, Robert Mundell is not about to lose heart. I'd be willing to bet a huge amount a huge amount on a world currency in in 100 years or even 50 years or even even 20 years i'd be able to bet an unlimited amount of money but nobody would bet with me on that subject <laughs>